Now, the importance of having a proper medical record, it helps improve patient care. This, this is kind of self-explanatory. Simplifies your data collection and retrieval. So if you keep records regularly on what you're seeing, what you're doing, not a lot of information, but just pertinent points, later on when you go back, you have all the information clearly in front of you. It ensures that the care is continuous, which means that if I'm giving a treatment today and then some other doctor comes tomorrow, they can just look at the back of the file and see, all right, so this much was done already. Now my job is to take this forward. It reduces the time. Again, at every consultation or every follow-up that you have with the patient, be it inpatient, be it outpatients, if you already have it in writing, what has been done already, it reduces a lot of the consultation time. It promotes preventive care. So we can look at what was going on, what advice was already given, and it helps there. Preventing exacerbations from happening, preventing complications from coming up. And it enhances quality of referrals. How so? So if I feel that something needs a specialist help, a super specialist help, and I want to send someone to someone, if I've written it very clearly that these are my findings, these are the reasons I've sent to you, the referring doctor also is aware. So there are many ways you can do that. You can obviously give your friend or your uh, colleague a telephone call and tell them that I'm sending you this patient, these are the findings, but it's not always possible to do that. If you are referring a lot of patients or you're seeing a lot of patients, you can't always take out the time. So if you put it in writing in little points of what you found, what's wrong with the patient, it helps when you're referring. It enhances efficiency. Obviously, if you do all these things, the efficiency is enhanced. It helps in audits later on. When you come back, if there's an NABH audit or a JCI audit or whatever uh, board, even AFPI does audits sometimes. So whatever board is checking on your work, making sure that you're giving the maximum, the best quality of care, these data helps in your audits. And the patient obviously is satisfied. And that's what we are all working for, right? To get a healthy and happy patient who knows how to take care of himself and who knows he or she needs to turn to you when there's a problem. So what's the importance of proper medical records? Again, we are continuing with that. It helps in training. If I have nice records, and I can show my students that, yeah, this is how I saw the patient, this is how it is, and this is what I'm going to do. It's a teaching tool. It helps in improvement. So if I've done something and I look back at it and I said, okay, I could have done this a little differently. I could have written this point also. And every day we are improving. It aids in review and morbidity meetings. So if there's a mortality or a morbidity meeting and you want to find out why, what happened, you can look back at what you've done already, what your team has done already, and think about ways that you might be able to do it differently in the next patient or in the other hand, maybe you'll know that, no, I did everything that I possibly could, and this is how it turned out. It helps in research. It's a wonderful source of information for any kind of forward or backward study. So if you're doing a backward study, you can look back at what your records are written. You're doing a forward study, obviously, you know what information you want to collect, and it's all there. It helps in medical legal issues, like I said already. These days, you can't be too careful, so you need to keep records very clear so that you don't land up in trouble and you can answer. You can always be very clear that this is what I felt, this is what I did, and this is the outcome. And you have that in writing because as much as you go into the court of law or anywhere trying to explain what your heart said, unless it's there as a proof on paper, it really doesn't make any sense. So litigations about neglect and mismanagement, they can be cleared out with that. So short uh, ideas on how to write progress notes, be it in your OPDs or your IPD notes. There's an acronym called SOAP. I'm going to start with S. S is subjective. Easy way to remember everything that your patient tells you, little points about that. Objective. What you understood as a doctor from what the patient told you and from the report findings. So that's objective. O. A is assessment. So we are analyzing whatever the patient told me, whatever I understood from the patient and the patient's reports to come to some sort of a diagnosis or at least an impression. You cannot always go to a final diagnosis, but at least 
you can have a DD or a provisional diagnosis and then plan. What are you going to do next? Do you need any other tests? Do you need to educate the patient further? Is there something that needs to be monitored? What medicines you want to give? What procedures you want to do? Do you need to refer to anyone else? And do you need to follow up? And if you do, when? So SOAP, S-O-A-P, so easy to remember. What the patient told me, what I understood, what is my impression, and what am I going to do about all of this? That's how you remember and write your progress notes. So this is an example of how a family physician write, writes an ideal progress notes. You don't always have to write exactly like this, but this is how this particular person went. SOAP, things that the patient said or understood, what my observations were, my findings. This is not me, I'm saying my, this is someone else's writing. Um, what is my diagnosis? What am I going to do? And then dividing it into clinical, individual, and context of the problems that are there. So this is an elaborate way of writing SOAP where you are doing a three-stage assessment and SOAP. As a family physician, this is the ideal way to go, but something modified from this works. Another example, same doctor, different patient with a 57-year-old patient. And these are the ways that um, she went in understanding and trying to help out. This particular patient came with no real background problem because the file was lost. 